Hello, guys. Today we're going to be going over IB business management section 5.3. So this is personally not one of my favorites, but we're going to go over it and revise it. So let's begin. So section um, 5.3 basically begins with lean production. So let's define it's a key term in the syllabus. It's Japanese approach to operations focusing on less waste and greater efficiency. So, so as we can tell, the two like key phrases are less waste and greater efficiency, which are like correspondent to one another because when you basically produce less waste, you are more efficient, okay? Because you're using your raw materials to the maximum, okay? So the starting point for lean production is to identify values desired by the customer, okay? So values desired by the customer. Then all production stages that do not add value are eliminated. Uh, it can include waste of time, so okay? Time, so basically waiting for the next stages of production or waiting for some elements to arrive, and transportation, products, so you know, the facts that need to be worked or scrapped, space, so maybe basically they have too much raw material that are being stored and uh, they're not being used directly, and talent, so not optimizingly, you optimally using worker skills and knowledge. Okay, so basically in order to be the most efficient possible and to minimize your waste, right? So things that you can minimize, waste that you can possibly minimize include time, transportation, product, space, and talent. Okay, so these five aspects and, you know, wasting time is something we all say on a daily basis. So we always ensure that we don't waste time. Transportation as well. So maybe instead of like transporting um, one thing by itself, you can transport like a set of things together or like product or space, space is like basically storage and then talent, which is like the employees skills and knowledge. Okay, so basically cutting waste is directly linked to greater efficiency, like I previously mentioned. With less waste, the organization's resources, such as physical resources, human resources, and financial resources will be better used. Okay, because like we said, for example, human resources is linked to what? It's linked to talent. Financial resources is linked to example with space, where it's storage costs, or you have transportation costs, okay? So all of these things. So physical resources can be more can be more used efficiently, and the amount of space for storage is reduced. Okay, uh, human resources can be deployed more efficiently. For example, reducing unproductive travel times between venues. Financial resources can be used more efficiently. For example, holding up stock ties with work with uh sorry, holding uh stock ties up working capital. So basically, um. The, the raw material or the stock itself is actually costly. So basically the business is paying for the stock, but it might not even sell it directly. It might take a, a large amount of time or it might not even sell it. And this stock itself, the cost of the stock is, is, is like money. So basically the stock itself is money and the storage of the stock is money. So you're wasting a lot of financial resources there. Hence the money cannot be used anywhere else in the organization. So like it's tied up cash basically. So methods of lean production. So you have Kazen. So Kazen, what is Kazen? You have to know how to define. It's a keyword in the syllabus. Kazen is basically a method of lean production based on continuous improvement. It may involve suggestion uh, boxes or competitions to find suitable areas for improvement. So key, pr key principles of Kazen are Kazen focuses on the process and not uh, the end product. It's very important. It makes sure that it minimizes waste as much as possible. And it always focuses on continuous improvement. Continuous improvement is very, very, very important. So basically, it minimizes waste because it's lean production. It's a method of lean production and also it's based on continuous improvement. So there is never enough improvement when it comes to Kazen. Um, systems thinking is needed in order to, con to consider the whole production process and not just a part of it. Okay, so basically it's all about the operation. So like, like, like we always know in business, there's several, several parts of production and Kazen focuses on improving them holistically, not just one of them. No blame should be attached to any problems or issues raised. Otherwise, employees may hesitate to comment or add some suggestions. So basically, um, if something goes wrong in the business, if there is an error, if uh, something just happened that wasn't supposed to happen, then uh, Kazen, in, in, uh, in the principle of Kazen, um, employees um, shouldn't be blamed um, or like at least feel like they're really in the wrong because in the future they might hesitate to contribute um, by giving comments and suggestions so they don't do that in Kazen. It must be inclusive to all levels of hierarchy. So whether you're a floor manager, whether you're an executive, everyone um, is included. The main problem with Kazen is the fact that it's different to maintain over a long, it's difficult to maintain over a long period of time. So basically because there's continuous improvement, it does require a long period of time. So why is it difficult? Because again, it requires a high level of commitment because it's focusing on all parts of the organization and a sense of loyalty among employment um, employees is required. 
So now these are quite interesting, just in time, just in case. They're really easy and they actually really asked about in the syllabus. So basically, what's um, they're both basically both a method of stock control, but they're different. So just in time is a method of stock control, which means avoiding holding stock by getting supplies only when necessary and producing only when ordered. Basically, um, the business only buys the raw materials, they only produce the goods, and they only sell them when there's like a certain amount of demand for goods. For example, um, they know that 300 are gonna be sold, they only produce 300, they don't produce more than that, okay, because they don't hold stock, which is why it's called just in time, because they do it when it's needed, the time it's needed, right? Whereas just in case is quite different. And basically a holding reserves of both raw materials and finished products in the case of sudden increase in demand. Just in case they always keep stock, they have storage for stock. And then when they get the orders, um, they produce them. Uh, but that's for the raw, the raw materials. But when they have finished products, then they just sell them directly because in case there's just sudden demand in the market, something goes wrong in the market or their product becomes trendy, whatnot, then they need to sell more. So they always have them there just in case. So the names are really easy. These are really easy. So just in case, just in time, G-I-T, G-I-C. And you can just remember just the key term, like the key term itself, not the definition. And you'll get one point at least, which yeah, it's better, of course, to know the full definition. Because just in time is basically when they just avoid holding stock and they only get the necessary materials and products. Whereas just in case they hold both the stock and and the raw material and they they directly sell them in case there's an increase in demand. It's really really easy. So now, cradle to cradle design manufacturing. So basically, um, what is it? It's a approach to design and manufacturing based on principles of sustainable development, especially recycling. So as you know, sustainable uh, development it's really 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 trendy lately. And that's why they ask about it a lot in the IB exams, right? Um, um, so basically, uh, to receive the cradle to cradle certification, which is called C2C, products need to fulfill a certain criteria. So what are these certain criteria? They need to have the reutilization of materials itself. So basically, the material needs to be recyclable. You can use it more than once. The material needs to be recyclable. The amount of energy necessary for the recycling process. So basically, renewable energy, most in most cases, it's ideal. The amount of water needed as part of the recycling products. And the corporate social responsibility, as we know, it's CSR, which I explained in section 1.3, the video is up of the company. I just put this, I inserted this for my students who are using the notes. Um, it's just the IB uh, mark scheme. Uh, but basically, if you want tutoring, if you want the notes, um, then you have to be part of uh, the students of IB Excellence Academy, where we give you notes, we tutor you, we nourish you before your exams, we ensure you get really high grades. Um, and the, if you want any details, just uh, email me down below. So now quality assurance and control. So there's a difference between the two. So basically quality quality itself is a key component of operations management. It's important for a producer as it can lead to increased sales, reduced cost, repeat customers, and premium pricing. Okay, so basically quality is how good the um the product itself is. So basically if um, the product is durable, it lasts long, um, then, it ha then the company will obviously have increased sales or the business itself will have increased sales because um, the the comp the business will begin to de develop brand loyalty because customers think, uh, think that or believe that the business is really ensuring that its quality is important and they're ensuring the well-being of their customers so they're going to get increased sales, um, reduced cost because again, once increased sales take place and there's economies of scale, economies of scale is when each, um, the, the production of each unit decreases and then they have repeat customers Basically, repeat customers is when they develop brand loyalty, as I previously mentioned, and premium pricing. Premium pricing is when basically they're able to char charge high um, prices, which will like make them have a high profit, I guess. Um, and this is really good for the business because they increase their profit ultimately because because premium pricing is associated with high quality, right? So I'm just going to like associate it with high. Uh, okay, sorry with high quality, right? Um, so basically, once a product's high quality, then it deserves to have a premium price and customers are convinced and willing to pay for this uh, pro uh, product with a premium price because they know that it's durable, it's going to last long and it's worth the price, most importantly, right? And the term quality suggests that a product is reliable, it's not going to break down or fail, it's safe, it's not dangerous for users, it's durable, it's going to last, and it's innovative. So they're basically getting what they paid for. By innovative, they mean like um, there's not much of the same product in the market, it's um, it's unique. So innovative, innovative means it's like quite unique, it has an edge. So now quality control versus quality assurance. So what's the difference? So basically quality control is 
controlled by an individual carrying out an inspection after the production run has been completed. So it's just one person carrying out the inspe inspection, checking out if everything's good. Whereas quality assurance is, um, it's done through the organization itself, okay? So the whole business focuses on the quality, not just one person, okay? So quality control is like one person, so I'm just gonna write it. One person, organization itself, okay? Then you have the costs. Uh, so basically a maximum percentage of reject is, rejection is set, wasteful production. Okay, so basically they have a maximum amount of rejection. They can't reject more than that amount. For example, if um, this company or this business, whatever, it just produces toothbrushes, right? Then um, there's like a specific percent of the tooth toothbrushes they can actually reject. They can actually throw whether they have defects or whatnot. Um, and they can't do that more than that. Where... Um, Basically, it's wasteful production. Why? Because um, they end up throwing some of these toothbrushes. So they basically wasted raw materials. They wasted time. They wasted energy. So yeah, so that makes it wasteful. Uh, whereas quality assurance, zero rejects are expected because again, um, they expect perfection. Every product should pass inspection because again, they don't want any waste. There is no waste production because they don't want to waste any of um, the material they've used, the raw material, the time of their employees, the skill of their employees. Processes of quality control. Quality stops at the job. The only focus is at the job at hand. It's rare to halt production and it's costly to do so. Okay, whereas quality assurance, quality includes suppliers and after sales servicing, and the company expects to have production to fix errors. Okay, so basically quality assurance is basically they put everything um, behind quality. Quality is the most important. Uh, whereas with quality control, that's not the case. They stop it because they just, at a certain point in time, because they just want to focus on their job at hand. So people, so, qual uh, so in quality control, the quality is the responsibility of one person. So like more role culture, autocratic relationships, one year communication. So it's from top to down. So from the um, top of the hierarchy to the bottom of the hierarchy. Whereas in quality assurance, it's quite different. It's the responsibility of the whole entire team. No one takes blame. So they have total, total quality culture, demo, democracy, and 360 communication. So basically you should just know because these are important. Like they can ask you what's the difference between quality control and quality assurance. Like this is something that they can really ask you in 10 market and even come in 10 market. It's a really, really important concept. So you do the quality control. It's like by just by one person. Okay, so I'm just gonna even write the down for you to get one person. Um. Okay, whole organization, right? Um. Quality first, okay. waste some waste okay so these are just like key points you can remember right so now let's go to methods of managing quality right so methods of managing quality in order for quality assurance to work effectively the whole business has to embrace total quality cultural shift as with case and approach it's difficult and costly to achieve in short term but may improve beneficial uh, but may prove beneficial to the business in the long run okay so basically we do know that it is expensive right we do know that um it takes a lot of time it takes a lot for the business to sacrifice but in the long term it is worth it okay methods of improving quality assurance is quality circle benchmarking and total quality management so we're going to be discussing and breaking down each one of these and you have to know how to define these, these are key terms in the service so quality circle it's a formal group of employees who meet regularly to discuss and suggest ways of improving the quality in the organization so what are advantages um there are quality issues that can be addressed batches are being rejected there are supply, okay, oh, sorry. So basically these are just like I, something I got from the mark scheme. I thought they were like more details I added, but turns out they're just stuff I got in the mark scheme for my students. So basically, yeah. And you could also tell from these um, that these are actually um, stuff from the case. So whatever case I've gotten these from, but basically you can just tell that these require um, input from the, from the case. So there's always content in context, like I reiterate in every video. And so now benchmarking. So what is benchmarking? Benchmarking is a tool for businesses to compare themselves to their competitors in order to identify how they can improve their own operation and practices, right? So basically it's quite easy because it's like a benchmark. Just remember like in the race when they're trying to like run, remember it's like a benchmark, okay? So it's useful for co consumers because they know what to expect. It's also useful for consumers because they use benchmarkers to help them identify how they can improve the quality of their products and services if they wish to do so. 
businesses look at market leaders in the industry and fo follow those organizations' best practice practices. This is done in order to improve quality. So they basically use them as like role models some way, somehow. They, they like see how they achieve the sort of success and become a market leader because they have a large market share. Benchmarking can be implemented in several ways. Some companies may use benchmarks that already exist in their industry. A company with specific quality issues may study another company that they identify as the model they want to follow and, emu and em em emulate. So this is like I said, role models. Benchmarking can be done in a collaborative way with, with competitiveness, the competitive businesses acting together to keep up to date. And benchmarking relies on business ability to innovate and create. Okay, so remember if you want the like acronym IC. So IC, innovate, create, right? Okay. Um, then we have total quality management. So what is total quality management? It's basically an approach to uh, quality enhancement that permeates, permeates the whole organization. It can include quality circles and benchmarking. So basically total quality management includes also quality circles and benchmarking. So basically what is the feature and the purpose? So basically you have the quality chain as the quality of a business depends on the quality of suppliers and after sale services. Okay, so it's just not the business, but also about the suppliers, how they are selling the, uh, how they are selling the products and the after sale services who are selling the products. So basically the suppliers, from where are they producing the products? Because we do know that, um, I mean, where are they sourcing the, the raw materials? Sorry, this was like um, a mistake I said. But basically it's very important because sometimes um, a lot of time, uh, like for example, Joe recently, they have gotten into a lot of... Um, controversy just uh, uh, just of just because of their suppliers okay um in italy or where not or whatnot so you really need to be careful or sometimes some suppliers are even caught um uh, using child labor so you really need to be careful um what your suppliers um do where they source their raw material because this may jeopardize the brand image of the business and this may not align with the values and ethics of the business right um so yeah this is what I was um, trying to say, basically. And of course, after sale services, because again, um, if the employees selling um, these services aren't, um, aren't really giving the best service, then the business won't really be um, having a good brand image with their customers, right? Okay, so basically, we're going to go with Statistical pro process control. So basically, it's all stages of production that they're monitored and information um, is given out to all parties. Mobilized workforce. So all employees at all levels of seniority in all departments, from, so from top to bottom, even those who are not in direct contact with producers and uh, customers are expected to embrace total quality management. So everyone is expected to do so. Everyone's expected to follow um, these procedures right um okay um everyone is encouraged to take pride in their work and they are given responsibilities and recognition everyone is included in the decision making process by focusing on what the business wants the business can ensure that it's innovating and continue and continually reinventing products that can lead to improved sales and brand revenue okay because again they have a market oriented production meaning that they focus on what the market wants and what the market is looking for instead of um the pro what the product should be right so they want to satisfy the customer's needs and wants right so advantages of implementing lean production and total quality management so advantages that it can, and it can motivate the workforce okay because again they always want to improve there's always space for improvement so this motivates the workforce um it always makes them believe that they can do better it can reduce costs okay because long-term costs because again they're minimizing waste once you minimize waste then you decrease costs um, but again, it's like it's like long term cost because it takes time to implement. It can enhance the reputation of a company. It can improve the design and production of quality production. Um, it can create closer working relationships with all the stakeholders, right? Because they all have one common goal and they're all working towards that goal, right? So disadvantages of implementing lean production and total quality management. So disadvantages is that it's costly, especially in the short term. So again, long term, short term. In the short term, the short term is very costly because you have to minimize your waste. You have to make sure that the entire organization is working and spending time on um on on really reviewing every single um product in the stock. Um, they're making sure that their whole operations is going smoothly. They always want to improve, so it's a lot. 
a lot of investment in time and money. Tough may need significant training. It takes a lot of time to change corporate culture. Um, it, it can create a lot of stress on former relationships in the business and can it, it's difficult to maintain over a long period of time. So previously mentioned it. So basically make sure you, you this you, you need to know this because again, it needs a lot of commitment, okay? Because it requires heavy commitment, right? So national and international quality standards. Um, meeting, um, gaining certification for recognized quality standards assures cost consumers that the quality of products they are getting has met certain requirements, right? So it basically um, kind of gives the business some sort of credibility, right? Um, and what this like this credibility can give the business is it enables exports because people around the world will want this product, so it will enable exports. So their market share will become larger because they're going international. Um, it gives them a competitive edge. Okay, so some businesses may not meet this national international quality standard, so it gives them this um uh, this edge, enhance the image and reputation of a business, um, acts as an because again they they seem credible, they have credibility, acts as insurance, leads to higher profit margins because again higher sales, okay, so more sales leads to more sales revenue, leads to more um profit, save on the cost of withdrawing products, right? So this is it for section five point three. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment down below. If you want tutoring, then you can always email me. And if you need any assistance, just comment down below so I can help you with it. If you want me to solve any past paper, go over any section, then also comment down below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.